there, Skullheads. I'm Snags. And I'm old Silky. Welcome to the Snags and Silky podcast. We got Gregory Fitzgerald on today to talk Monty Python. But before that, we need to pimp the website, snagsandsilky.com. Jump on there and get your t-shirts and merch and all that jibber-jabber playlists from and uh, other links from previous, uh, you know, podcasts and shit. Links to videos and books and music and all kinds of shit. Spend yeah, your whole on. day on we'll snagsandsilky.com instead of working. We'll do That's a podcast. Uh, we'll do a uh, playlist of uh, Monty Python stuff uh, for this one. Yeah. So definitely go on and check that out. Yeah, yeah. All right, so um, we're talking Monty Python. Uh, there's a great uh, documentary on Netflix before before Flying Circus, and uh, basically just kind of outlines what all these cats were doing. They were kind of working around each other for many years before Monty Python took off. So I'm just going to rattle off a, a list of the shows they worked on. I'm Sorry, I'll Read That Again was a radio show. Uh, Cleese and Chapman and Idol uh, all worked on it. They're all writers, and Cleese was one of the cast members. The Frost Report. So David Frost uh, of Frost-Nixon fame uh, weaves into this story in an interesting way. He did quite a few TV shows that all these cats worked on, so he kind of cultivated this group. The Frost Report, 1966-67. Cleese was a cast writer, a cast member and a writer. Idol was a writer. Chapman, uh, um, Palin, and Jones were writers. Um, at last, the 1948 show, Chapman and Cleese, cast members and writers. Island, I, Idol was a guest star and a writer. Twice a fortnight. Uh, how, is Mike, is it, is it Palin? Like Sarah Palin? Yeah, Michael Palin. Okay, yeah, I was... All right. Um, They're not so, related, though. I know. Palin and Jones, cast members and writers, uh, do not adjust your set. Idol, Jones, Palin, cast members and writers. Gilliam did animation on that one. Yeah. We have ways of making you laugh. Idol, cast yes. member and writer. Gilliam, animation. How to irritate people. Cleese and Chapman. That totally sounds like a John Cleese yeah, they, show. They, How to irritate so people. A lot of these guys w went to uh university and then uh at one point cleese went over to america and that's where he met um uh terry yeah, Bailey. yeah yeah so how how to irritate people cleese and chapman cast members and writers palin cast member um the complete and utter history of britain palin and jones cast members and writers doctor in the house cleese and chapman were writers and uh and then not too long after that they got Monty Python's Flying Circus together. Yeah. Um, they banged around a lot. Uh, BBC pre-69, and then in April of 69, they all just kind of, it was like a perfect storm, really. They all uh, came together and realized uh, that that sense of humor um, was going to carry on. Uh, I know for me, uh, in the early 70s, all that stuff was in syndication. And so as a small, probably five, six years old, I was uh, introduced to the the silliness of Monty Python's Flying Circus and um, really never looked back. Uh, it was probably extremely inappropriate for my mother to have that on with me, but um, it, it really is very silly. Uh, I don't think I would bat an eye in showing some of that uh, flying circus stuff to my kid who's nine. So you know. I used to watch that and Benny Hill. When I was yeah. A kid. Uh, yeah. Benny Hill was another one. Um, yeah. Lots of, lots of uh, suggestive uh, breasts and, and hot chicks, much like the hammer horror stuff. We were kind of on a, on oh, a there team. you go. We're on a we're on, connects, a, we're the, on the, a, a a tit the, streak. The Brits love tits. Yeah, yeah. That so, uh, episode. Greg, when did you when did you first run across Monty Python? Uh, you know, I think kind of like old Silky. I mean, it's it's uh, you know, just 
and it's funny because when i saw it as a kid i thought it was like oh this is like current run bbc Did, but it you know absolutely. obviously it was all rerun because i mean yeah. the show ended in 74 and i mean i was born in 71 so i'm pretty sure i wasn't watching it in the in the no. uh in the crib uh I don't, you know why i don't think it syndicated to america till the mid 70s it was, 70s. It yeah, was in, yeah, exactly. uh, usually on npr i think yeah i i don't know well, well it was um we had i grew up in in you know near the public uh, tv the or of detroit and of course we have toronto right across the river there and so we had the uh, whatever Canadian station there, the CDC or whatever it's called, uh, the C CBC, I think is what it's called. Um, you know, they, you know, 90% of their programming is hockey, but mm -hmm. the other 10% is pretty much BBC uh, programs. And of course, Monty Python and, and of course, and like uh, Snags was saying uh, the uh, uh, Benny Hill, you know, both of those are pretty much, uh, you know, the, the two things that, uh, that were coming up a lot. Uh, so yeah, I saw a lot of that probably starting around, I don't know, somewhere in the eight or nine year old range, you know, so pretty much right at the end of the seventies, early eighties when I was introduced to it. So I was still quite young and impressionable, but it, it definitely, uh, it, it um, I think part of it was the fact that, my stepfather, he's not somebody that laughs easily at anything. You know, like he's very particular about his comedy. Very serious. And man. the fact that this was something that he found hilarious and, and found very uh, clever and brilliant. Uh, that, I think, as a kid, made me take notice like, oh, maybe I need to pay attention to this. Like, there's something about this that's really good. And I think and that that I necessarily noticed it new or new as a child, because obviously at that time, you know, a lot of it's it's just the the silliness that you recognize, sure. and you're just like, okay, and this is funny, but it's it's later on as you start to get a little older, and you can watch it again, and that's when you start to really kind of see the brilliance and the and mm -hmm. some of the simplicity of it. I mean, it's it's uh, how they can. Uh, convey the ideas they can convey through uh, very simple concepts really um, yeah well they, they took uh, they did in 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 flying circus i always felt they they took the the well-read educated uh you know college approach to comedy and, but then brought the absurdity like um uh you know some of the um the composers, decomposing composers, or uh, the soccer match with uh, the the Greek um, um, philosophers versus the German yeah. philosophers. Yeah, yeah, just hysterical. <laughs> uh, or or the uh, the the talk show where they bring um, they bring Mount All the time on. On? Yeah, yeah, and they're asking them uh, soccer uh, trivia questions. Right, right. Uh, and they they asked. The they asked Another Carl one Marx. that I thought was was great too is the um, the uh, what is it, the going in and to the center and oh I, you know paying for a five minute argument and he's going oh yeah the, yeah and they're yeah. having an argument about what is an argument yes this is not an argument yes it is no yes, you're just contradicting me yeah no, it's, I'm not. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, so <laughs> that's just such a so I, I put to you guys. How would you explain Monty Python to somebody who's never uh, heard of it? I mean, I would I would start off with uh, that it's British humor and it's it's the absurdity uh, looking at life differently than um, you know some. I, I would say American humor can be um, slapstick and violent, although Charlie Chaplin was British. Um, Buster Keaton, slapstick Buster and Keaton. violent. <laughs> That's yeah. it right there. That's um, Buster Keaton. Well, I, I think when you look at, because even even British uh, shows outside of, I mean, even sitcoms that are BBC sitcoms now, I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at a lot of those and the way the jokes are done, they, they, and Monty Python was 
brilliant with this is you know it's not you know uh set up punchline set up punchline you know it's not these yeah. you know it just pop 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 it's you do this nice slow build and you keep building and you get laughs and it's building and it's building and then you at the very end that's when you hit them with the punchline and then it's you know yeah well uh case in point is um uh eric idol comes in and terry jones is playing his mother and he comes in and graham chapman's this uh, grumpy dad in the corner and eric idol comes in and the mom's all excited that the sons come to visit and um they start you know the dad doesn't approve of what the son does and uh what you find out as you watch this this skit play out is that eric idol works in a uh coal mine and his dad is a playwright and so it's the you know you're uh you're too good to to read a book and all you know it's the reverse of the usual oh, thing. Yeah, where, yeah. Know, he's like that the son the son believes in hard work and the dad is this artistic guy and the son's yeah. like, one day yeah. you'll see the value of working in a coal mine. <laughs> You're just behind the times. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's uh and he man. talks about going to these luncheons and uh coming home to work a uh, scene out and then off to something else and and uh and he's that's a full day, son. And uh, you know, um just the absurdity, uh, and it's throughout, uh, you know, so the Flying Circus did uh, five seasons. By the end of season four, John Cleese was really kind of over the um, the repetitive, like they, they'd gotten into a groove, and he wanted to just kind of dip out. Um, they did continue on with season five. Um, opening that season was the... Uh, age of ballooning which is a really long mini movie on the age of ballooning uh going up in a hot air balloon and uh, that that's like the most non-funny monty python i've ever seen uh, <laughs> if, if you're familiar with season yeah, see, five it's, it's it's over your head man yeah it's you way over it. yeah. yeah it's up up uh you know yeah, I uh, it's you know we were watching that when i first started dating my wife i introduced her to those and she just loved every single episode and then we get to season five i had to kind of break it to her that cleese was not going to be in season five and i think i think cleese is always uh people's favorite uh or you know, faulty towers is oh that's uh, hilarious talk uh, about honestly, the build up. i think some what? of the best sketches were when you had Cleese and Palin. Yeah. Two of them together because you had you had the dead parrot yeah. sketch. You've got the uh, the two French Cleese, the two French Cleese guys with the, the the lamb and they're they're doing their little goofy that was always good. Uh the uh the the fish license when he's going and he's trying to get a license for his fish. I mean yeah. these were just and it was just the that you could tell the two of them just really both of being straight guy men mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the in the and you know because a lot of times it's oh you got a straight guy and you got the the goofball but yeah. in this case it was two straight men and it was the most whole you know just absolutely yeah, both, both getting irritated at each other well they're <laughs> they're pacing uh what's funny is is cleese and graham chapman wrote together and I think uh, Palin wrote by himself, um, and as well as Eric Idle. Um, but uh, actually, Palin and Jones might have written together. There, there were like two, two, and, and Eric Idle, I know, wrote by himself, which I always... Uh, well, I know Cleese and Chapman definitely were, and that was part yeah. of what drove Cleese away, too, was on top of the repetitiveness was, was, uh, was Graham's... Uh, oh yeah uh, alcoholism yes was uh was definitely getting to the point where cleese was just uh he had had enough and... yeah it was in the way of sitting down to write so that whole routine i know um years ago uh snags and i would get together to write and there would always be something going on uh one of us would be uh sick we'd 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 still meet up to write but it just the you have to 
you have to really be disciplined with it. And um, mm-hmm. those things can easily get distracted. And uh, Yeah. So Greg, I, I'm sure, you know, this is the cat that co-wrote that script that I sent, that I sent you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. About our, our, our lost year after high school. So, oh. yeah, was, we're lucky to be alive. Yeah. Um, so after, after um, the show wraps up season five, um, I, each of them went on to other projects and they came together uh, later in the mid seventies to start their movie uh, legacy. Um, do you have anything else to say about the flying circus or? Well, we should mention the two mm-hmm. German specials. So they did uh, Monty Python's Liegen der Zirkus. Yeah, I think they did like 45 seasons yeah. uh, or episodes and then there are two Monty... German episodes. Yeah, yeah. So um, two 45 minute specials. The first one was actually recorded in German. I'm not sure if they all knew German or if they were just phonetically mimicking the German. And then the second one was recorded in English and dubbed into German. Oh, okay. But they're uh, they're yeah. both very I funny. Wanna, I just want to say that again. Monty Python's Fliegende Zekas? Yeah. Um they're they're both very funny. Um you gotta you gotta do this when you do that, snag. No, no. No. <laughs> um no, that's right. uh, those those yeah. are funny. They're not just throwaway oh, yeah. episodes. You know what? Another uh, speaking of people who walk funny, um, remember the office of funny, the office of silly oh, yeah. walkers or oh, office yeah. of silly walks. Yeah, ministry, yeah. ministry, yeah, ministry, ministry of silly, silly walks. Silly walks. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, there's there's just so many uh, amazing standout uh, skits that they did for sure. Yeah, yeah. The fish dance, twenty seconds of just oh my god, yeah, like it's done like, <laughs> like old, what the uh, hell is this? I don't know. I don't film, it's hilarious. And, you know, oh. and they they oh. released a film in nineteen seventy one before they really started their official film careers. Uh, now for something completely different, it was a collection of sketches from the first and second season, and I remember us watching that in high school, mm-hmm. and um. The thing about growing up in the 80s is probably a lot like growing up in the 50s, probably somewhat like growing up now. You had a culture that was very defined and restrictive, and there were a lot of things that were not okay. Yeah. And and um, having this absurdist humor with no rules was very refreshing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's and that appealed to me as far back as I can remember. Uh, we would just embrace anything odd that was not linear a b c d we you right. i want to come in uh at h and go back and for you know just that, i mean that it, up, I, you know? that show inspired a lot of our humor you me and the some of the uh, other crowd we hung out with yeah the graffiti we spray painted on the side of the school yeah, that no, well, still no one knows about, right? The, the absurdist graffiti. It was like well, they think they do now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we busted ourselves a few it, times. It was yeah, it was just this absurdist graffiti, and um, yeah, it didn't uh, make any sense. But right, right. The fallout because... was being at school and seeing there were classes that assigned um one class an english yeah. teacher assigned her class to figure out what it meant what what symbolically what are they trying to say because because people would spray paint stupid shit like smoke dop and led yeah. zeppin just so misspelled we're, we're shit. at lunch looking at, at the latest smoke dop and they left the e off and i'm like god yeah. damn it man and we're yeah. we're like actively upset so, and so we what, uh, let me see if i can remember what we spray painted it was I, I I know. Dear- it. Don't don't say it yet. Um, somebody had wrote uh, uh, "Iran Maiden Rules." Nah, it was Smoke Dop and Led Zeppelin. And, and Led, Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. Maiden. Yeah. Is yeah. there an Iraq Maiden that goes Maybe. along with that? Uh, the, but the Led Zeppelin is what. So we're driving around later that night, uh, 
throwing ideas back and forth and you know we come up with like the ultimate we go let's get give, let's get spray paint something paint fucking paint. interesting it was on the side of the rotc building is where yeah we which it. we hate you know we hated the authority the, the rotc yeah. so one of the things we wrote was rotsy rhymes with nazi uh, <laughs> did we really write that no oh, yeah 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 that was the, that was i forgot uh, about that one that was specifically at Sergeant. Um, well, see, it, it looked like the two of you high five just then. Yeah, right. Because he was going yeah. for his cup, and you oh, had one oh, reached oh. over there, so it looked uh, like he both had. There, there was a the there was a sergeant that was just so. Um, we weren't in ROTC, but this guy was in everyone's life. If you went yeah, to that high big. school, what was his name? I forget, but yeah. I, I know who you're talking about. Oh, he was intense, man. So we purposely defaced the ROTC building. But <laughs> so it, it was uh, Dear Clamp, Gone Smut Pumping, Keep Granny Away From The Kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are butt doodads in the fridge if you're hungry. Signed, Signed Xavier. Xavier, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so that, was, so that was much more interesting than... And... and <laughs> Yeah. We show up the next day and like the entire school is in the courtyard looking at this message. <laughs> like, what does it mean? Like, did you know, it, like did, UFOs did, had landed, you know. Did it after you were dating the the Terminator? He calls his ex-wife the Terminator. After you were dating the Terminator. And he brings her up every fifth episode. It's amazing. <laughs> after you were dating the Terminator, at some point she you're telling her that story. Well, and she's like, oh up. my God, I have a picture of, she took a picture yeah. of it and you didn't know until after you guys. Know, yeah. Yeah. Years later. Yeah. We, uh, that I may have that photo somewhere, but uh, yeah. So, so then we, it got sandblasted off. And we and went back and spray we painted went it back. back on. And then the second time we signed like the, the uh, SGA president's name. And, and Did the, we? yeah. Glenn Zweig. Glenn Zweig. <laughs> and the guy, the guy actually got in trouble. Hey, Glenn, uh, if you're listening, like, like we're we're walking down the hall, and you hear him in the office, like, "Why would yeah. I sign my own name?" And uh, it was just tremendous. <laughs> All right, so um, so we would not have we would not have done we would not have laid that graffiti down without Monty Python. That was total Monty yeah. Python absurdist fucking humor. And I, um, I would say Snags and Silky, our sense of humor is really a a uh, mash together blender of um, like Monty Python, uh, Saturday Night Live with Chevy Chase, uh, Caddyshack, uh, Hunter Thompson. There's a healthy dose of Sam yeah. Kennison and Andrew Dice Clay yeah. in there too. Yeah, and 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 really, um, Charles Bukowski. Uh, oh, for sure, yeah. Really, just that is that's who we are. Uh, and I think every episode we end up talking about ourselves. It's yeah, like, right. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all, it's all, it. I I find that even funnier on every episode where we yeah. go off topic. Yeah. But, no, Monty Python really influenced so many people. Um, yeah. So, just so with... at, at this point, I've worked on a short one-act play, a full-length play, and we're currently working on a screenplay with Greg here. Okay. And his humor is fucking completely Monty right Python. Now. That's what. That's what. Well, it was, with a, well it's, a, it's a mashup of that and Mel Brooks, I think. Those are, oh, those yeah. are my two probably yeah. main... Young Frankenstein and... Yeah, like yeah. those... All of History that. of the World, that, part yeah. one. Which is, have, which is really... all that and, together, and that's... Yeah, so you, 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 the old Jewish man and a bunch of breads. You know, well, Mel, like, Mel Brooks <laughs> Mel Brooks is really the dad joke uh, taken to the extreme, you know? the, the Oh, yeah. He does it with such brilliance. That's it's so good. Uh, I recently watched Young Frankenstein, Young Frankenstein, and it's still, it's just timeless. It's so fucking funny. Um, Look at the size of those knockers. Yeah, oh, <laughs> tremendous. Oh, thank you. Why? Right, thank you. Um, and we uh, recently uh, we're talking about Abby Normal um, at work, but uh, anyway, so. Python uh, goes off. Uh, Cleese and his wife 
who was uh, in the Flying Circus uh, as one of a recurring uh, female actress. Mm -hmm. uh, the two of them did Faulty Towers, um, uh, Terry Jones. They've all written books and, and they've just done so much. Uh, you would oh. you would have a whole room full of faulty towers. Things. Faulty towers. Talk about the slow buildup. Every episode, it starts. Things are normal and slowly builds up to where they're in this ridiculous fucking situation. Yeah, hilariously yeah. ridiculous. And and the the comedic tension, the way they would build it up through an episode, that's oh, just God. masterful comedic Cleese writing. Does Cleese does anger. Like that's his yeah. go-to, and it's yeah. just—he's a straight man, yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> epic. always one uh, getting irritated. Yeah, yeah, when he, you know, uh, refers to his wife as his little piranha fish, and just all these little. Every time you watch Faulty Towers, you yeah. you hear, see, or catch something else. But um, so I think in '75 they start with um, Life of Brian. Yeah. Um, oh, oh and I wanted to say, well, and now right, for something yeah, completely yeah. different, uh, you said that was a, just a grouping of, uh, you know, reworking the sketches in, in a movie situation. And I, that movie, I, I caught that uh, probably 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. um, 82, 83, there was a college that showed, like, uh, they might show Taxi Driver on a Monday night. Right. And you, you go there. And uh, you, they sold popcorn and stuff like that, but the movies were free. Mm -hmm. And so I saw um, like Reefer Madness there. They, they, they would just get these films way yeah. before Netflix, way before being able to rent a. a, a see, kids, movie. back when we were young, you had to leave your house and go to see a movie, movie. <laughs> or it had to just happen to be on TV. And yeah. then there was this big technological advancement where you could walk, you could drive to a store and pick up a cassette and drive back home with it. But anyway, That's called the evolution of porn. Yes, yeah, that too. That's exactly <laughs> right. Um, but no, the the this theater it was like a college theater, and they just had uh, ton. Like you could you could catch Orson Welles' Third Man, um, uh, Citizen Kane. They just had different things all the time but uh we would catch the python movies there and uh they they started with that one and they went in order um but at the time there was just the three i, I believe uh meaning a life had not come out yet but uh, yeah because they didn't come out till 82 i think 83 yes. yeah. um, it was early 80s yeah yeah so life of brian uh they filmed over in um uh the desert a lot of areas uh like well holy grail we, we should talk about that first because that's 75 oh yeah okay yeah. yeah that's tremendous too that riding out with with the coconuts for the yeah they couldn't of afford horses. I mean, that's probably the most quoted movie of oh that. absolutely you know I mean, they, they couldn't afford the horses budget. in the budget and somebody uh we're just you know maybe we'll just do a a sound effect and only film the actors from the waist up you know and but then they you know being monty python the absurdity of it and they just did that whole um you know which led to the whole bit about you know how did a coconut get here and yes. oh. african or european swallow yeah. i mean I mean, it just, yeah. I mean, one little thing and suddenly it, it writes itself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it writes itself. Um, and, and Neil Innes, uh, you know, everybody kind of, like I always felt Neil Innes was a hanger on or, or something, but he, he brought a lot to, uh, to their, uh, especially that whole brave Sir Robin and, and, uh, Holy yeah. Grail stuff. That was Neil Innes. And, um, his uh the ruddles was their whole beatles uh uh mm -hmm. spoof el condor here comes el condor right what's up, what's up buddy right? say hi say hi so they hear you hi very nice el condor right. making his cameo condor there he goes that's every other episode we get a el condor yeah he makes an appearance <laughs> yeah. i, I never so know honest. what he's gonna say 
<laughs> you know, it's funny with uh, read about uh, the making of, of Holy Grail, and of course they they kind of got to the end, and they were like they they couldn't figure out how to how to end the movie, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so then they said, well, what if you know what if you know they've done all this murder and you know, they've killed all these people? I mean, you know. Why wouldn't the cops just show up and t- you know take you know so that was just and suddenly that became the it's such the a end, end. it's they really like, like what even, <laughs> it's brilliant it's it's even still, with, it's one of the funniest damn it oh it's it, but even with uh, flying circus um, when they couldn't end a, an episode they would just bring in the uh, the animation yeah you know? and, and, and that was something completely different yeah and so, just. I've always had this idea and I'm just going to share it in case there's any filmmakers in our audience that want to use it. Of You have a movie and I've probably told both of you this idea, but I got to share it with our kajillions of listeners. You have a movie and it's like terms of endearment or something really oh, real. gut wrenching and the just expertly, no, or, or yeah, or, or uh, Ingmar Bergman kind of thing, expertly okay. acted uh-huh. Uh, pathos tragedy you're totally sucked into the world of movie. and 45 minutes in all the main characters are in the same room and a giant king kong hand comes in and squishes everybody and then yes, it says the that, end yeah. and that's it yeah yeah and maybe ah uh, you paid i got whatever. your money yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. and then somebody uh, wants to do that i would love to see it well, I, in the, I, the terms director. of in, terms of in deer hunter and Deer Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the director cameo the guy, King Kong. after the King Kong hand, the guy gets in the car and flips everybody off and drives off with, with the money, you know. <laughs> you and I did a short film. Uh, we had these characters named Chico and Vibes who were basically oh. Monty Python inspired Laurel and Hardy. We had to have yeah. Yeah. the yeah, reason was- why we the reason why the snags and silky logo has us wearing those hats is because those were the Chico and vibes hats. He had the little bowler hat and I had the, the Mexican Zorro hat. Yeah. And um, we did, we did some short films and they were always live action, but one of them, we had this drawing at the very end. It zooms out from this drawing of us dancing, dancing off into the sunset, flipping, flipping yeah. everybody off yeah was it, it was those those were done uh very much in in um an homage to uh wc fields charlie chaplin um with a, with a totally absurd yeah uh, probably more yeah. laurel and hardy than anything but uh, well it was like laurel and hardy on acid is what it yeah was like. i would i would it would be great to get those to dvd somehow yeah, I think I might have those on three. I know you have all that three quarter inch tape. But Ooh, three quarter inch tape. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm sure it's I got nothing. one of those. I'm sure I got a player around here. Somewhere. Those, those were the days. Um. Yeah. Uh. So. So. Seventy five. Um. Holy Grail. Uh. They. They pissed off all the religious factors. Uh, I know. Um. Cleese or or Michael Pale. Several of them. Uh, maybe Terry Jones because he was he was the most um, uh, collegiate, uh, but um, they were actually on a show with some uh, higher up uh, Catholic uh, people, um, and it was you know it's a movie. Anyone deserves pissing off. It's them. It's, it's lighthearted. <laughs> It's a lighthearted movie, and let's uh, you know they it and I mean Martin Scorsese's made made one. Uh, they, they've just um, Mel Gibson did one. Uh, these movies did one what? Uh, religious uh, Jesus oh, movie. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. Temptation oh yeah. It, you take the Passion uh, of the Christ and of the, Christ. Uh, <laughs> the Last Temptation of Christ and uh, and Life of Brian. That's a trilogy right there. It is. It is. Yeah. Um, and then throw in Debbie Does Dallas, and you've got yeah. a you've got You're a, good to go. a movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a fun weekend for the whole family. Sure. Yeah. Um, just in time for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, or Spanksgiving, if if you will. Ah, uh, yes. But uh, no, the uh, they, they 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 it's all controversy, and and what it does when the um, when the Bible thumpers get upset. Uh, all they end up doing is 
causing everyone to go see the movie. You know, I can't tell you when I was a kid how many cool bands I got turned on to by the PMRC crowd. Because mm-hmm. my, Ooh. I've told this story before. My uncle was dating one of those ladies, and my cousin, you know, my uncle's son was like, um, "Hey, man, she's got this really cool video. It'll, it'll hip you to all these great bands." And we were like, hey, can we borrow the the Satan Satan and music video that you have? And she's like, oh, sure. Here you go. Thinking we're going to get warned about all the... And I'm just making a list of bands. Oh, Alice Cooper. Got to check him out. You know, mm-hmm. just... <laughs> yeah. I It, it, it's does, just it, does bring, the, it just brings publicity to it. Yeah, you know? it just brings publicity. That's what I'm trying yeah. to get at is, is they, they get all upset and they don't want you to hear it. Um, and all they end up doing is sending you to, to these, uh, right, right, different things. So, um, I I love the idea of a of a, somebody who other people have decided is the Messiah, and he wants nothing to do with them. I mean, that's just so yeah, I, because I it's it's so very natural. Uh, I think um, plenty of people accidentally get famous. Um, for whatever reason and and they find that it's not what they wanted you know and uh i always felt life of brian really oh, i'm not the messiah <laughs> the true messiah will deny he's the messiah okay uh, i'm the messiah he's the messiah or just the uh the people's religious front in the in the arena looking down at the uh at the uh gladiators and they're they're back and forth <laughs> Uh, it, it just hit on all the hippies, the protest uh, thing. Um, there's that episode of Rockford Files where he meets a young hottie and she's she's all about this. And he, uh, Jim Rockford, mentions, well, what are you going to be against next week? And, you know, it's, they just constantly move through uh, life attacking anything that doesn't uh, fit their ideal uh, image. Yeah, kind of like now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's what appealed to me with Life of Brian, uh, apart from it being Monty Python and just hilarious. Um, there's one story during the filming of um, Life of Brian. Um, they went, <clears throat> they all in a bus, they they decide to go um, to Auschwitz to, uh, you know, uh, do the tourist thing. And they get there. And there's a guard that says, uh, you know, we're closed today. Uh, you know, for some reason, Auschwitz is closed. And Graham Chapman in the back of the bus yells, tell them we're Jewish. You know, like that'll, that'll, they'll open up and let them in to see, you know. Yeah. Um, but that was Graham Chapman's sense of humor. <laughs> Pretty damn funny. Well, and, you know, what's what's interesting with Life of Brian is, uh, I don't know if you, you might be know about this, but that they're actually that um, Cleese and Eric Idle have actually developed it into a stage play that's going to be opening uh, on the West End, I believe, uh, this next year. Which, um, which what's that called? It'll that's, still that's... be Life of Brian. It's, it's, oh, it's okay. literally the Life of Brian. And apparently it was i think it was earlier this year they did a a reading of it in new york city and they had a bunch of you know really top notch you know broadway actors Mm -hmm. reading this and of course what scene do you think they had thought "Mm, i don't know if you should leave this scene in here that they were talking about oh right and yeah some uh i think snags was telling me about that that uh the loretta scene yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) what it's a comedy you know what before getting ready to come on i was like you know what because I hear it about it, and I'm like, because it's been a while since I've seen the movie. I like, uh-huh. I just, I Googled the, you know, pulled up the YouTube of just that scene to watch it. And I'm like, this scene is hilarious. I mean, it, it, regardless of what, you know, it's Eric Isle. He's like, because, you know, he's sitting there and, and Cleese is talking about why, why do you, you know, what is it you want to, you know, because they're talking about, you know, rights for men and everything and women, you know, is what Eric mm-hmm. Isle is yeah. coming in. And he's like, what do you, what do you care about rights for women for? And he's like, well, because I want to be a woman. You, you want to be a woman. What do you want to be a woman for? 
Oh, so can I have, so I can have children. Have ch- you can't have children. You don't have a womb, you know, like, what? what uh, ridiculousness. So I mean, it's, just, it's a hysterical scene, but of course now everybody's like, oh, I don't know, you know. Oh, they, my God. Oh, it, it, it's, it's a comedy. Nobody's well, I'm throwing these in. If you, if, you, are, if you make if you if you yeah. do something that's funny, unless it's so vanilla, oh, you're gonna, gonna offend, offend somebody. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I, uh, personally, why, why worry about it? And and that's all basically you have to what Tom Cruise said too. He's like, no, we're not taking that out. And I'm like, it's well, it, it would be the one that, are different now than they were then, and blah blah blah. You know, just if if that scene the, was missing, that would be the scene that everyone would be like. Well, what? Wait a minute. Why are you, you know, you, yeah, it would you, draw more attention to it actually if it was missing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, and the thing is, all you have to do is Google comedians versus hecklers on YouTube, and you'll see how often people get offended at comedy. It's every night and oh, some yeah. comedy club. Yeah. You know, it's constant. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, But yeah, they, uh, they really, shook things up with almost with every movie they did. Um, and that's the beauty of Monty Python is being able to poke, you know, poke the, uh, the limits uh, of what people think is, uh, you know, is funny in general. And, it, and it, all it does is make you more creative or make you, you know, they, they've set so many paths, um, influence so many people. Mm-hmm. Just a minute. Well, and what's interesting too, though, is well, yeah, it is all this absurdist comedy, and everything. They still manage to do it within the sort of historical context because they, they're, you know, historians have said that, yeah, actually, you know, they're, they're very, uh, you know, obviously there's all the absurdity and everything, but uh, the, the, the framework and everything, they're, they're actually very historically uh pretty accurate well, half of them went to cambridge the other half went to oxford except for yeah. terry gilliam so yeah. they were edu- very well educated oh, yeah, exactly. very smart yeah. very intelligent and yeah. hence why i, I think just, that's probably part of the reason why their comedy is so yeah. fantastic uh, because I, it isn't just a bunch of you know potheads sitting around right. writing yeah. crazy shit um, and then you know but like their satire, you could you could almost point at Lenny Bruce, where you know Lenny Bruce's whole thing was um, politics, religion, sex, vulgarity. Uh, it, it it that's all throughout the the Python uh, canon. You know every yeah. everything. The, the 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 difference is they they took a lot of the. Um, the anger, it wasn't as direct. Like Lenny Bruce w- was like a laser beam, an acidic oh, yeah. laser beam, just trying to cut through the bullshit. Yeah. And they were more mocking the bullshit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I think, think part Lenny, of that too is, you know, Lenny had an axe to grind. Um, yeah. Well, and he was, yeah, I mean, he was brilliant. here in America, you know, during. And he was before um, his time. During, That's the other during, thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and let's face it, I mean, this that that era of that he was around i mean that was 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 kind of the cusp of of when we were starting to have this social revolution yeah yeah happening happening against the accepted norm and i think that's what really pissed uh pissed people off because he was you know, it, it oh, especially yeah i mean because nothing was sacred to him so there would have yeah, been no yeah, george carlin without Lenny bruce from when before he can't, you know, yeah. when and he George Carlin, the one he has ended. Yeah. George Carlin and Bill Hicks uh, and Sam Kennison, those three. Doug for, Stanhope. Doug Stanhope. Doug, yeah. The, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. As, so yeah. much. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. so, so then um, Life of Brian comes in. Uh, or, well, we did Holy Grail and Life of Brian. Um, mm-hmm. For a long time, that was uh, that was the three movies, and then they actually toured through the U.S. doing a bunch of uh, skits, uh, famously at the Hollywood Bowl, and I believe somewhere in uh, Denver or something. Hmm. 
Um, like so they have that. Like if you look at the live albums that that they you know because a lot of the skits ended up as live albums. Sadly, Spotify does not have a lot of uh, Python, so I, there will not be a playlist. But I would encourage all of you to go and check yeah. out. There's a box set. See how has- this, this show evolves live. He promises a playlist, and then yeah. he checks his phone while we're talking. That's it. Realizes this not, be not there. <laughs> he can't yeah. do it. Oh. But there's a there's a box set of like the complete uh, studio. Those albums are hilarious. Um, they got into. I think they they wrote stuff specifically for the albums that were not skits, but they're just as like listening to a radio show. Right. So, yeah. Very funny stuff. <laughs> so uh so yeah so they did it live at the hollywood bowl i think is the only one i haven't seen but that came out in uh when did that come out in 81 yeah so that a lot of people were introduced to them that way uh where they do crunchy frog which is hysterical um i'm a lumberjack that you know they, they did that stuff on the stage and it was uh, mm-hmm. just epic so and then Meaning of Life comes out in 83. And um, I remember us watching that in high school. We didn't, we didn't, we met in what, like 85 or something? Yeah, 85. Not too long after this came out. And I remember watching this. I remember us watching this too. Yeah. On, yeah. Uh, was, I think I had the videotapes for that because those were just, you yeah. had to have them, you know. That scene where the dude just eats until he explodes. Yes. Oh my God. Uh, Mr. Creosote, if I uh, remember it correctly. Um, and the, all the fish with their heads uh, were as fish. And uh, there's a bit where a guy's uh, um, being chased by uh, topless women with um, safety helmets on and they're, and he's running for his life and they're, they're all chasing after him and they chase him off a cliff. Um, but beautiful uh, bare-breasted women chasing this guy off a cliff. Uh, <laughs> hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, but yeah, Meaning of Life was great and uh, touched on a lot of different topics that, again, very controversial. <laughs> and that would be the last uh, Python movie. I, I'm sure some of them wanted to do it, but uh, when, when you have six people involved, in getting something together, um, you know, it's, it's always going to be, and, and they've all been so busy doing different things. Uh, Terry Gilliam went on to do Brazil. Um, yeah. He, he became a famous director, an auteur. Yeah. He some um, killer stuff. I, he's done some good stuff. I've not liked everything he's done, but yeah, we, we trash fear and loathing in Las Vegas in, in our Hunter Thompson episode. That makes Terry yeah. Gilliam, um, accessible though when you know yeah. it's not perfect but um you know uh, i thought brazil was incredible yeah so, brazil was wild that um, was an amazing flick you got anything on uh meaning of life greg um <clears throat> i think you know for me that's that's one that i probably that's probably the one i've watched the least mm. like i probably you know, and I think overall, that's probably, you know, because like obviously, Holy Grail is pretty much they're probably right. their most popular. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like when the Stones were doing Undercover instead of Sticky Fingers. By then, it's starting to go downhill. You know, I mean, the later it wasn't necessarily going downhill, but I think they just it it just wasn't. Uh, it certainly wasn't the same energy that yeah that um, people early on. People, but, they work their way up to the top and then at some point there's a plateau and yeah. it's more of the same uh, riding the wave at the crest of the, you know, and um, it's for the fans that just want anything, um, there's so many Python related things out there. Spam a lot was uh, yeah. up on Broadway. I don't know much about that, but they, they've, They've all continued to kind of add to that. They pipeline. basically, yeah, they basically took Holy Grail and turned it into a musical, mm-hmm. and threw in um, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, which of course was not in Holy Grail. It was actually Life of Brian, but right, 
but they went ahead and you know, they put that song in. That in song that. is hilarious. I love oh, yeah. that song. Um, Boy, it's, it's a piece of shit when you think when of you, it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what's funny with with the whole musical or uh, ballet treatment, um, there's a ballet for Carrie or a musical for Carrie, which is a Stephen King novel. Right. Um, it's been a while. Just recently, uh, there's a Black Sabbath ballet that Tony Iommi was brought in to uh, play guitar accompaniment for and i'm like please put that on dvd you know <laughs> uh I, I don't know i you may see it down the road but it's just these random things that you'll catch or hear about um i happened to be in atlanta years ago and at the arts arts um the museum there um at top art center yeah uh they, there was What's a that? There was a Stephen King uh, short story that had been turned into a, a musical play or something, and it we just happened to be up there. And I'm like, let's see if we can get tickets for that. And and nobody was there to see this thing. Um, <laughs> it did fill up, but I felt, and it only played in Atlanta, and and like New York or something. So yeah. I, I, it it was not amazing, but it was cool to see some exclusive thing you know uh, i'm a stephen king fanatic so it was gotta mention uh gotta mention the ruddles with uh eric yeah. idol and neil Starting Ennis. Down, uh the ruddles is a great uh spoof of just uh, like if anyone watches a hard day's night and help and then puts the ruddles on you're gonna almost not even yeah. it, it's seamless it's um, a spoof of the beatles and they did the film all you need is cash yeah <laughs> yeah it's, uh, yeah neil ennis had a great time with that um and it a lot of your uh pythons are in that um another python kind of was um uh a fish called wanda that had uh michael palin eric idle uh John Cleese was Cleese, in that. Yeah. That movie was hilarious. If you was hilarious. Where he's he's he loves the smell of her boot. And he puts the boot up to <laughs> to his mouth and yeah. inhales with the boot yeah. and shrinks. And then Kevin, uh, is that yeah. Kevin Klein? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Kevin, Kevin Klein. Klein. Um, yeah, yeah. Was it Jamie Curtis in that? What was what? It? Was it Jamie Lee Curtis? Is she? In yes. Yeah, Jamie yeah, Lee Curtis and Kevin Klein. And uh, um, at one point, Michael Palin's in a disguise. Uh, it's a like ridiculous a Rasta, a Rasta guy. Uh, it's just, <laughs> just epic. Um, Palin and Cleese, I think, are my two favorite pythons. Uh, do you guys have a, a favorite, or you just kind of take it all? I. I Try. I mean, yeah, I would say those, those, and and to some extent, Eric Idle too. I, there's something oh, yeah. about yeah. his just sort of because every time he pops up in something, like, I mean, even though it's it's like one short little scene, but it's probably the best scene in the European Vacation movie. Uh huh. He's the bicyclist, and he yeah. gets hit by the car, and then you know, and of course, he's borrowing the lines pretty much from the from the black knight you know it's like yeah. oh it's clearly a fish balloon and he's got you know the thing vein is just like spurting everywhere yeah. he's like oh no 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 it's fine eric idol will just come on with a big half ass shit-eating grin and i start cracking up you know it's yeah uh, it's great shit um it's hilarious Michael Palin as the gangster in the um, flying circus where he's chewing on a toothpick and and he's uh, got the kind of Cockney accent going. That shit kills me. It slays me every time. Um, and then John Cleese when he just loses it and goes off on somebody. Uh, yeah. No, those are... Frothing at the mouth. It, uh, kills me. So on Netflix... Uh... All these movies are on Netflix, plus a few documentaries. There's a series on the history of Monty Python. There's a there's a documentary called uh, you know about about them before Monty Python when they were doing mm -hmm. all that David Frost stuff. 
There's mm -hmm. best the, there's the Flying Circus series. There's best of from the Flying Circus series. Um, there's a there's a lot of shit on Netflix. Uh, yeah, there's you can even catch that, that live uh, sh uh, concert at Hollywood Bowl. Um, yeah. There's spotlighted things on each member of their best uh, skits. Uh, there's there's just a an overabundance of Python related um, things on Netflix. Um, so you got no excuse to get out there and freaking check it right. out, man. Yeah. yeah, man. Get your Python on. Um, you got this, to. This is your public service announcement. <laughs> It's we're very it's, we get very preachy about the shit we dig. Oh yeah, uh, well you have to, you gotta care. Um, yeah. But the the Python stuff, it's it's difficult to have an episode where you're just gonna start talking about Python. And if if someone has not seen any of it, nothing we've said tonight is gonna really make any sense. I, I have a feeling the handful of people who listen to this podcast, I would hope that they, uh, according to the analytics, most of them are in our age range. So they're listening because we're talking about shit they know. But yeah. let's check the analytics real quick. Let me see if there's any young whippersnappers listening. Hold on a second. This is this is the ejaculation part of the episode. Yes, yes. The you mean the ones that are wiring like misfits we, shirts, even yes. though they have absolutely no idea. No idea, are. right, right. So uh, less than <laughs> we've got less than one percent in the eighteen twenty two range. So that means somebody, right? So okay. you whippersnappers need to check out Monty Python. We got 2% in the 23 to 27 age range. So you whippersnappers need to check out Monty Python. We got 5% in the 28 to 34 range. So you whipper and yes, you're 34. You're still a fucking whippersnapper. You got to check out Monty Python. I don't know that anyone should say whippersnapper. And um, then, oh, I'm sorry. I, I need to say it like this. Whippersnapper. Yeah, That's these better. are fellow yeah. skullheads you're talking about. You know? Get out of my yard! Yeah, um, sons of Get off my lawn. Then we, we've got 8%, 35 to 44. Now they've heard of it. They're listening because, you know. Mm. And then a whopping 80%. There it is. 45 to 59, our age range. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, up? those are Darn our people. <laughs> yeah, what's up, homies? And then... Uh, <laughs> Four percent, sixty plus. So yeah, you you've already heard everything that we're saying. Yeah. So, um, those people probably were watching that stuff when it came when out, it, as it was because awesome. as it was coming um, on yeah. out. So. I, I we're just, making a list of all the shit we got wrong on this episode. <laughs> I just remember, <laughs> I remember laughing so hard at some of those flying circus episodes. Um, John Cleese. Uh, the dead parrot, uh, just so many uh, different um, ones. He's not dead. He's just resting. Out. He's he's uh, he's lovely plumage. It just it's just so good, man. The um, the yeah. him taking it out of the cage though, and then taking the bird and just smacking it on the counter. <laughs> yeah. This just... is an ex parrot. Uh, he's like, oh, you stunned him. <laughs> he's, he's, he's so him. Good. oh my god um That's hilarious there's just so much uh you know and and you revisit them uh every couple of years and just it, it's just so good uh, i actually have the flying circus episodes uh there's a, a ton if you get one of those collections that have all the Flying Circus episodes, mm -hmm. um, there's just so much added bonus feature mm -hmm. behind the scenes. If, if you're one of those guys that really needs to know, uh, there's a ton of information throughout all that stuff. Uh, very well documented. They should do they should do a commentary track on one of their movies where it's just them making weird noises. It, it could be that it, it may already be there. You, you just... For like, you know, 90 minutes. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so it's that's... just. Yeah. Nick. Um, well, that's, that's, uh, that's all I got, man, on the Python. They're, they're just amazing. All right. I concur. You got anything else, Greg? Like they said, go check it out, folks. All you younger, all you young folk. 
Yes, Find out what true. real humor is is all about. Damn straight. Oh my Damn god. 15% of you listening that don't know shit and you we educate you every episode. Okay. Yeah, because there's a, you know there's a lot of comedians. Put me in a woke it. PC pussy and go <laughs> go watch my. <laughs> That's it. That's the one. Uh, uh, no, there's a lot of co- stand-up comedians that you'll watch and they're just not funny, but they've got a following, and you're like, "What the hell?" <clears throat> uh, you know, and and maybe it's it's a generational thing, and you just you're not. Um, it's just they're timeless. Uh, the, some of these uh, Python skits are just phenomenal, but I'm 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 rambling, so we'll you're we'll, rambling. We'll wrap All right, it. so why don't you pimp the website one more time, and then we'll sign okay. off. Greg, uh, stay on for the post show wrap up. Uh, kids, get on there, uh, snagsandsilky.com. Uh, check out all the different episodes, the different playlists for a lot of the episodes that involve music. Uh, there's links to books. Uh, there's a whole world out there if you just set the tablet down. Um, yeah, put away the TikTok um, and the and the fucking yeah, Snapchat um, and all that jibber jabber. And you know, at some point when you're out there trying to uh, land a babe, you got to have something to talk about. So listen yeah. to our show, you, and you're you gonna can, have, you're gonna you can drive away talk. so many women talking about Monty Python. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Repellent repellent you know uh, if you have too many of them crowding you just start yeah, i mean if you're, start if you're life of brian you can't get to your fridge to make a sandwich and they're not going to do it for you um listen to the star trek episode um, <laughs> right. that'll do it that'll just run put that right. on at yeah. full volume that'll clear out the house um, but anyway go on the site get you a mug and a and a sweatshirt winter's coming on hard um yeah. Christmas Day, Day, Father's Day Fucking coming up uh, in June. Fast Steel Day. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta load up. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway. All right. So. All right. Peace out, y'all. Stay on, Greg, for the post show <laughs> wrap up and uh, see you next time.